our faith to recognize the one that lives in us? What more could we see if we just used our faith to recognize the one that lives in us? So I've just been kind of experimenting and like just using my faith to recognize the one that lives in us to see what I can change around me because when I recognize the one that lives in me, I actually can end up doing more unintentionally than what I intentionally set out to try and do. Like things just happen around you. It's like, oop, oh, whoops, you just got healed. Sorry about that. You know. And uh, there's, a, uh, there's a fascinating story in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 5, verse 30. And it's, it's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I just love it for so many reasons. And, uh, but the end of the chapter there, it's the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And um, I just, I, uh, there's so many dimensions that I could preach on that. And there's just so much about faith in there, of just childlikeness and what have you. But uh, I mean, it's, oh, I just love this bit. Faith, heaven is attracted to faith. I mean, heaven is attracted to faith. And it didn't seem to matter that that woman was breaking Mosaic law. It didn't seem to matter to heaven. She broke the law and she still got healed, just a thought. I mean, it's like, anyways, but it says there in Mark 5.30, it says, at the very end there, it says, Jesus turns to the woman and he says, your faith has made you whole, go in peace. Your faith has made you whole, go in peace. And I studied that out. And I found that in Acts 16.36, where the keeper of the prison said to Paul, now therefore depart and go in peace, it literally means, in the prisoner's situation, go in peace. Go in peace, as as you would say farewell to somebody as they leave. But when Jesus says to the woman with the issue of blood, go in peace, it's actually not really a great translation. In the original context, it actually means go into peace. Right? So one is go in peace and the other is go into peace, which showed that perhaps Jesus is actually releasing there a key to divine health, is that we walk, we walk in peace and we stay in, that, we stay in that place of peace. And so it says, you know, Jesus was saying, like, as you go into Shalom or step into the, the house of Shalom, not only would the woman receive healing, but because she was actually already healed, she was healed when she touched him. Right? Not when Jesus said it at the end. She was healed when she touched him because the blood flow immediately stopped. That not only, did she, uh, not only did she receive healing, she received total and complete wholeness. And last, uh, last October, I was um, sharing in this school AMT for first year on healing. And I was actually sharing, uh, as the whole lesson wasn't on this. It was just one piece where I touched on it. And I stood in front of a gentleman on the front row and I said, and Jesus says to the woman of the issue of blood, your faith has made you whole, go into peace. And then I stopped and realized I was standing in front of a guy and I said, well, I guess she wouldn't have that problem. And I moved along the road to the first lady and I said, and Jesus says to the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has made you whole, go into peace. And I carried on. And that was Tuesday, Friday, I'm leading Friday night service and she comes up to me and she says, hey, do you remember me? And I didn't, and she reminded me you know, who she was, and, and uh, I said, she said, do you remember teaching, about, you know, in the AMT about going into peace? And I said, I remember that, you know, and she said, well, I was the lady that you stood in front of and said, go into peace, you know, your faith has made your whole go into peace, and I said, I remember that. And she said, well, I, I have, uh, you didn't know this, but I've got polycystic ovarian syndrome, and I was told that I can never have kids. And she said, as you stood in front of me, she said, I just knew that I'd been healed. Now, I'm all into, you know, I, I believe, but it's, sometimes it's like, I don't care what you believe or not, are you or not, are you or not? <laughs> you know, so I said to this woman, being an ignorant male, I said, well, how do you know that you healed a polycystic ovarian syndrome? She goes, I got my period. <laughs> and I'm like, yay for periods. <laughs> <laughs> I actually grabbed her hand and she had a ring on and I'm like, go home and make some babies then. And she goes, this is a purity ring. I'm like, okay. Get married first and then go make some. <laughs> a couple of weeks later, I was sharing at the Twinview campus on a Sunday night, and, uh, and I was sharing some of the testimonies that are happening, and this young lady came up to me and she said, um, she said, you shared it the, in the class, and she said, I didn't want to share this with you because I just... I didn't, it just felt a little awkward, you know, about sharing about my period with you. And I'm like, you know, 
it's not at all awkward for me. I've got a wife and three teenage daughters. <laughs> so just <laughs> fact of life in my house. <laughs> and she said, I haven't had a period for 18 months. And she said, I too was in that class that day. And I was sitting next to the lady that you stood in front of. And she said, and as you stood there, my period instantly restarted. And she said, I ran out of the class. Do you not remember that? And I said, I do. I thought I'd upset you. And she said, I needed to take care of something. And I <laughs> came back. So, so the testimonies have just, they have just kept on rolling in just one after the other. I'm in San Diego. I'm, I got a message around this that I preach called Accidental Miracles. And I, and I stood in front of a lady and I did exactly the same thing, not knowing anything about her. She'd been bleeding for 30 days nonstop. And as I stood in front of it, it just, it just dried up. And they, they keep on coming. And uh, I'll share two of, my, two of my favorite ones. And then we're going to, um, I don't even need to pray because there's going to be people here that are going to be healed. Is that um, there's, I was teaching at Leaders Advance last November across the room here. And a lady came in. She was on the second year team that I had helped to minister to the pa- pastors. And she had a blood-filled uh, polyp on her, um, on her, in her cervical area. And I didn't know about that, and she's pregnant. She goes to the doctor, and they said, if we take it out, it's a high chance that we'll abort the baby. So we're going to leave it in there, but it is growing, and we're just going to watch it and observe and see how things go. She came into the class that day, me not knowing a thing, and I just shared those testimonies. She says to herself, I'm going to take that. That's for me. She goes home, walks into a house, sneezes, and blows it out. <laughs> not out of her mouth. <laughs> She goes back to the doctor, and she, she, was, she was totally whole. But this is one of my favorite ones. This happened in May. I was, uh, I was driving up the freeway, and my gas tank said zero miles to empty. <laughs> I needed to make an emergency fuel stop on the way to speaking at the, our pastor's uh, healing school. I stopped at the gas station on Twinview there, and there's a lady opposite me pumping gas, and she's really pretty. And uh, I, I looked at her, and I saw innocence and purity written above her head. And it kind of caught me. And I kind of looked, and I thought, I better look away. Because if she looks at me, and I'm looking at her, she's going to think, you know, incorrectly. You know, I just saw purity and innocence. And I, I looked away, and I was doing the gas. And then next thing, she taps me on the shoulder. And she goes, you, uh, you probably don't know me, but I know you. She said, I'm, I'm a student, and I was in your class. And she said, let me just tell you about a little, a little bit. She said, I've gone through two abortions. And she said, she said not only have, did I get totally healed, to, I've been totally healed of the remorse and the guilt of all of that, just totally, totally healed. But she said something went wrong on their second abortion where they told me I could never have kids again. And uh, she said, I haven't had a period since 2011. And as I sat in your class that day, she said my period restarted. And I'm, I'm sorry it took so long to tell you. I just that was that's I think that's my favorite one, but it's you know it's I've had uh, it's not just for ladies I had I had a man come and he's been healed as well, <laughs> he uh, he had se- severe rectal bleeding and uh, and just as he heard the testimony he was scheduled for surgery uh, that just that just dried up and it's now at as at this morning I had the 53rd one this morning, 53rd testimony now they are first hand testimonies. Anybody that comes and says, my friend was healed, I haven't counted them. And I had so many of those, the first-hand account testimonies. And I just want to encourage you, please, I want to know, I'm not at all, I do not feel at all awkward about it. You can heal me and tell me all about your period story. I just, I absolutely, I absolutely love reading them. I've learned so much about woman's anatomy. It's incredible. <laughs> But uh, the, the thing that's got me is that I, as far as I'm aware, I've only prayed for three or four of those women in total out of the whole lot. It's just been at the release of the testimony, and, uh, and it's just kind of like it's just going viral, and it's been so fun. And uh, I just want to encourage you with this is that, you know, to step into peace, to step in to peace. Go, go into peace. Like you'd go into the house of Shalom. And, and I, I don't even believe that I, it's not like something like, man, I'm just really believing God that there's going to be a breakthrough in this. I know that there's going to be a, a breakthrough in this. 
There's, there's kind of difference. It's just, like, it's just like a knowing. I know that I know that I know that people here this morning are going to be healed. And I don't even need to pray as we just go into place, as we step into peace. And as the testimony goes forward, there's going to be a collision of heaven that you will be healed, whether it be polycystic ovarian syndrome, irregular periods, no periods, too many periods, whatever they are. It's like, I just feel like today, today is your day. Let's step into peace. <laughs>